to mention Troy Palomalu in the same breath as Ed Reed, to me, it's disrespectful. That's what Bart Scott said during an appearance on the Left Coast Show, and his comments understandably got torn apart by Steelers fans. Bart Scott is a former Ravens linebacker and teammate of Ed Reed. He was on the sideline as Troy Polamalu picked six to Joe Flacco to seal a win for the Steelers over the Ravens in the 2008 AFC Championship game. He was also a member of the 2010 Jets who lost to the Steelers in the AFC Championship who were led again by Polamalu in his Defensive Player of the Year campaign. So his objectivity on the issue is clearly non-existent, so we should not take anything he says on the matter seriously. The thing is, however, this is not some new one-off event. This sentiment against Palomalu in both the national media and NFL fandom has been growing for some time now, to the point where I would now argue that Palomalu is actually underrated. Playing for a very popular and successful team like the Steelers can bring you lots of love, but also lots of hate. Having luscious locks that are advertised constantly doesn't help either. The entire premise that it's disrespectful to mention Palomalu in the same breath as Ed Reed is laughable. It's laughable to claim that either one of them was head and shoulders above the other. For close to a decade, these two safeties dominated the NFL. Year in and year out, these two are at the top of their positional rankings, helping to spearhead two of the most dominant defenses of the 2000s. Brian Dawkins was close, but his career started about half a decade before these two guys, so their primes never lined up. That and his peak was slightly never as high as the peaks of these two. For their specific era, Palomalu and Reed were the two best safeties in the NFL, bar none. To say that one was clearly ahead of the other one after the fact is asinine, and anyone claiming this is likely viewing things from a biased lens. On top of that, most direct comparisons between the two players are flawed, considering that most people don't even take into account how different the positions of strong safety and free safety are to one another. Arguments using the fact that Ed Reed had double the interceptions Palomalu had, or the fact that Palomalu had over 100 more tackles than Reed did in less games, are utterly useless. Ed Reed is perhaps the greatest ball hawk the league has ever seen. Palomalu is perhaps the best in the box safety the league has ever seen. This is why strict box score comparisons serve no purpose in these discussions. I'm not going to make any definitive statements as to who I think was the better player but I will show why it's disrespectful to act like it's not a legitimate discussion. Let's look at the PFF grades. In the eight years that both players played that PFF has tracked, Palomalu graded out better than Reed in six of those years. In 2009, Reed was demonstrably better, though to be fair, Palomalu only played in five games that season due to two separate knee injuries, and he still picked off three passes. In 2010, the two's grades were a wash, with Reed only coming out two tenths places better. Reed somehow picked off eight passes that year in only 10 games, but Palomalu was just as good overall, and due to the fact that he only missed two games and was the best player on the best defense in the league per DVOA, he was named Defensive Player of the Year. He intercepted seven passes and had several timely game-winning plays, like this strip sack of Joe Flacco in a Sunday night game that essentially sealed the AFC North for Pittsburgh. However, 2008 was pretty much unquestionably Palomalu's greatest year, but funnily enough, he was beaten out for Defensive Player of the Year by his own teammate, James Harrison. He also picked off seven passes that year while racking up a career-best 89.4 PFF grade. He saved his best for the playoffs against Reed's Ravens, sealing a trip to the Super Bowl with a pick six of Joe Flacco. Again, Reed was also great that year, intercepting 9 passes for 264 yards and breaking his own record for the longest interception return in NFL history. His PFF grade was only slightly worse than Palomalu's thanks to lackluster run defense. Between Reed and Palomalu, this 3 year stretch may have been the greatest ever for a pair of safeties. To be completely transparent, as of now, PFF grades only go back to 2006. So that is discounting three years of Palomalu's career and four years of Reed's. 
Reed's 2004 season is perhaps the greatest ever for a safety. He intercepted nine passes for a then record 358 yards, and he scored twice defensively on his way to a Pro Bowl, first team All Pro, and Defensive Player of the Year season. He also made the Pro Bowl in 2003 when he picked off seven passes. He was named to the All Rookie Team in 2002 with his five interceptions. However, two of Palomalu's best seasons also occurred before the PFF era as well. Just like Reed, he had two Pro Bowl seasons and a first team All Pro year in that time period. He didn't start a game in his rookie year of 2003, but he intercepted five passes for the 15-1 2004 Steelers for his first Pro Bowl berth, and he made his first career All-Pro team the following year as the Steelers won the Super Bowl. As for the ends of their careers, they both experienced steep drop-offs in their final years. However, in my experience, it seems that Palomalu gets criticized for his more often. Perhaps this is due to the fact that Reed didn't finish his career in Ravens uniform, but in Texans and Jets uniforms, and people like to forget that that even happened. Who knows? But in Reed's final 2013 season split between the two teams, he put up a staggeringly low 48.2 PFF grade. In contrast, Palomalu had a grade of 66.6 in his final 2014 season in Pittsburgh, and he was only two years younger than Reed was in his final year. While Reed's grade was near the bottom of all safeties, Palomalu's was merely middle of the pack. In fact, Palomalu's PFF grade in his final season of 2014 was actually better than one of Reed's first team All-Pro seasons, that of 2007. All in all, each player played 12 seasons. Ed Reed made first team All-Pro 5 times, Troy Palomalu made it 4 times. Reed was named to 9 Pro Bowls while Palomalu was named to 8. A big difference between the two, however, was durability. In Reed's career, he never started less than 10 games in a season. Palomalu started 5 games in 2009 and just 7 in 2012, making him ineligible for most postseason awards, whereas Reed, due to name recognition alone at times, was able to pick up extra accolades since he merely played the minimum number of games needed. PFF recently named its top 101 players of the 2010s, Despite only playing in 65 games in that time period with some of his worst years, Palomalu still found his way onto the list at 63rd place. He was the 6th highest ranked safety behind just Eric Weddle, Earl Thomas, Harrison Smith, Devin McCourty, and Cam Chancellor. Having retired a year prior and having only played in 56 games while having a steeper drop off, Reed did not make the cut. However, when looking at the first decade of data PFF has grades for from 2006 to 2015, Reed and Palomalu were the league's two highest graded safeties, making PFF's all-decade team for that time period. Now, of course, PFF isn't the end-all be-all. However, advanced analytics for defense players are difficult to track, especially for safeties who have a wide variety of roles and responsibilities. Brian Burke, an analytics specialist for ESPN, tracks expected points added and win probability added. You've probably heard of EPA before, but WPA isn't much different. It measures each play in terms of how much it increased or decreased a team's chances of winning the game. In terms of WPA, Palomalu owns 3 of the top 11 and 5 of the top 25 seasons for all safeties from 1999 to 2015. Ed Reed edges out Palomalu in career EPA, but Palomalu bests Reed in WPA. In terms of pro football references approximate value metric, Reed has Palomalu beat 106 to 94. Not a big gap by any means, but when you go by the per game numbers, the difference is almost indistinguishable. As stated before though, direct comparisons are difficult because of the differences between the two positions. Ed Reed is almost indisputably the greatest ball hawk in NFL history. He was primarily a deep coverage player. On the other hand, Palomalu is greatest near the line of scrimmage in run defense, pass rushing, and underneath coverage. The thing is though, while Palomalu wasn't as good as Reed was in coverage, he was still elite in that category for most of his career, unlike Reed in run defense. In Reed's Baltimore years that were tracked by PFF from 2006 to 2012, he had the highest coverage grade for all safeties at a whopping 94.9 grade. Palomalu, however, still sat at just third place with a 94.0 coverage grade. From 2006 to 2015, Palomalu ranked second among NFL safeties in PFF's play-by-play -play grades against the run, and third against the pass. He was the only safety to rank in the top three of both categories. I'll say it one last time. 
Comparisons between Reed and Palomalu are difficult because of the nature of the strong and free safety positions. Most comparisons you'll see using standard box score stats are done in bad faith. However, ranking the two among their respective peers using advanced analytics is completely fair. As shown in this video, Palomalu and Reed had two very similar careers. The only thing disrespectful in comparisons between the two is acting as if one is vastly superior to the other. You could just as easily argue that Troy Polamalu was the greatest safety of all time as you could argue the same for Ed Reed. I won't fight you on either front. Offenses were terrified to face them both each week. Greats like Peyton Manning, Tom Brady, and Bill Belichick have been effusive in their praise of both players. Brady famously called Palomalu one of the most instinctive and disruptive players he ever played against. This is what made Palomalu so great. Steelers coaches often let Palomalu just freelance because he had an innate ability to dissect the offense before the snap and wind up at the right place at the right time. Defensive coordinator Dick LeBeau said that they designed their defense specifically around Palomalu so that he had the freedom to do whatever he wanted without hurting the defense. Former head coach Bill Cower once said, quote, Did he take chances? Yeah. Was he right 90% of the time? Yes. Palomalu could diagnose a play inside the box and know exactly where it was going. His dives over the line of scrimmage to sack quarterbacks at the snap are legendary. Yet, Palomalu could also play sideline to sideline as a deep center fielder if need be. He didn't just have to drop between the hashes as Bart Scott claimed. What we learned here today is that it is impossible to put Troy Palomalu in a box. He was a true freak of an athlete and one of the most instinctual players in NFL history. He was elite at all aspects of the position and despite being hampered by injuries throughout his time in the NFL, he still put up a Hall of Fame worthy career, making 8 Pro Bowls, 4 First Team All Pros, winning Defensive Player of the Year and helping the Steelers win 2 Super Bowls. Troy Polamalu is one of the greatest safeties of all time, and it's blasphemous to claim that he's not in the top tier.